Hey guys, welcome back to part two of this DOD delete uh, setup here. Uh, I am uh, going through uh, the uh, final stages of this uh, thing, but let me catch you up to date as the one I have done off camera. Uh, the front um, timing cover has been installed, but previous to that, I have put the uh, oil pump on the bottom uh, 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 pulley. So the crank pulley gets the oil pump and that ridiculous little 10 millimeter bolt that comes up from the uh, oil pickup tube. And uh, yeah, that, that was a pain and that, that, that was not something you wanted to see. Um, I also put the uh, crank uh, uh, pulley on, dampler, balancer. Uh, and yeah, that's what pretty much you, it will catch you up to date. And uh, I did some cleaning, uh, the, the individual uh, piston tops uh, and the gasket surface for the head. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much what I've been doing off camera. Um, and uh, yeah, I took a break for the, uh, the New Year's holiday. And uh, yeah, I'm back at it again. So, yep. Next to go in is the um, uh, lifters. Uh, first lift the tray, you know, lift, uh, the lifters go into the lifter tray, they go in, uh, head gaskets, and then the head's gone. Uh, and I think, uh, also, let me uh, show you what's been going on uh, for, the, um, for the heads. Now, off camera, I have also uh, cleaned uh, the bottom surface of the heads uh, got to be careful there they're aluminum uh, so um, yeah I also cleaned the surface of the valves uh, and lapped the individual va valves um, I also replaced the um, uh, the springs and retainers and seats so yeah that's all been done uh, ahead of time in preparation for putting them back in so uh, I hope uh, you'll stick around and watch them go in and this clip I accidentally uh, unplugged my microphone so uh, you get to hear this voiceover uh, so yeah here you see me putting in the uh, LS7 style lifters from Texas speed into the, the new lifter trays um, they have two flats on each side uh, and a vent that's on the end. Uh, the uh, vent is doesn't matter which side you put it on. I just picked the the, the right hand side of this lifted tray to put them in. I made them all actually the same. I I pointed them uh, uh, toward the rear. So um, yeah, um, they they just snap in and go on. Uh, the lifters uh, are pre pre lubed. And they uh, slide in uh, uh, with two little flats on each side of the lifter tray. And that's uh, kind of like a, a shampoo rinse and re repeat uh, sort of operation for the, uh, the other 12 um, lifters. And, and that's it for you. Okay, now I'm doing the um, trunnion upgrade, uh, replacing the those failure prone uh, needle bearings that are in the uh, rockers. And this is what I'm replacing with them with is this uh, CHE uh, uh, trunnion upgrade. Comes with everything we need to upgrade that. Uh, these uh, brass or bronze uh, bushings and the replacement uh, trunnion so uh, let's get going here I've already done one uh, this is the first time I'm doing this so I wanted to have a, a dry run uh, um, how it uh, installs and everything uh, it was pretty smooth so uh, let's get going here now the first thing you got to do is press the old one out of the rocker. Uh, it's not held in with any clips. Um, it's just uh, pressed in on both ends and uh, I will be pressing those out. I'm not just going to use my vise. 
Uh, I'm going to put a socket on one side and a smaller socket on the inside piece. And it actually snaps out pretty violently, uh, not violently, but caught my attention as it, when it let go. If you've ever used a full-size press, that snap when it finally breaks free. There we go. There you go. And then what comes out is the needle bearing itself captured inside here. The other one uh, just flew out all over the place. As a matter of fact, don't, don't expect to save any of these. Cause some of the needle bearings go all over the place. Now, you also have to clean this out pretty well. And I'm going to use spray clean off camera here, sorry. Spray it off with a little air. We have a pretty serious windstorm going on outside right at the present moment. Alrighty. Sorry about that delay. Now, this has got to go in there like that. On this end is where you put the snap ring. And you can't pre predo it because it's got a ridge on the inside. That's one end. As you can see, that was time consuming. And I only got to do, uh, you know, six more after this point, plus the other side. This is the driver's side. Oh, I see why. These things are bent a little. Recommended that you um, make sure that that thing is turning freely. The trunnion is turning freely on the inside. And move on to the next one. Alrighty. Now, let's do this one. Let's see if my speed picks up. Yeah, okay. If I keep having trouble with that snap ring player, I don't think so. See that pop? Yeah. Let's rinse it off. Let's blow off. Get the next two rings and the next trunnion ready. Right. 
Because then on one side, you press the slide the trunnion, and the trunnion is. The trunnion is uh, just a slide fit, it doesn't get in like the originals. Followed by another ring, it goes on the opposite side. After uh, installing the trunnion upgrade in the rockers, uh, I moved over to the um, installing the lifter trays and the lifters into the block. Um, it wasn't uh, too difficult to do. Uh, just aligning two little square slots, I guess you can say, and then uh, pushing each one of them individually in. As you can see, they, they go in pretty easy, unless you put them in crooked. Um, so... Yeah. Now I'm putting the, the back one in. Uh, quite a quite a reach for me across the front of the, the engine. And I, of course, I got it in a little bit crooked, so that it's it's fighting me a little bit here. So uh, I got to tap on it and. and get it squared up and then finally it beep, slides right in on a driver's side front one uh, was relatively easy to do because it's within my reach but uh, yep when I get to that back one <laughs> and I get a little difficulty there I can't quite reach it. <laughs> Try to keep my my shiny head out of the picture frame. With a little bit of persuasion, I finally got that rear one in on the driver's side. The next thing to go in is the um, the little bolts that hold down the lifter trays. Now you got to be careful with those um, and tightening them and also the size. Don't get them confused with another bolt because they're unique to the trays. One bolt holds down each lifter tray individually. And of course, torque down to the spec that I can't remember at this moment. It's small though. Look it up. And now I'm just giving you an overview of the uh, the whole engine, uh, the cleaned piston tops, the lifter trays installed and torqued, uh, ready to put the uh, the gasket down. Actually, it is down, and uh, yeah, we're getting ready to put the heads on. We're going to start right here now with the driver's side head and now we're gonna put that on right about now working under the um, uh, the brake booster was difficult it was very close on this side as well as the headers themselves and the steering shaft but that popped in pretty good okay now the passenger side gotta go on let's see if we can do this just like the driver's side Drop down over the dowels. All right. I guess the bolts are next. In they go. Well, it's been a minute or two, and I have done a lot of things since I recorded last, um, and I'm going to try to catch you guys up 
as you can see the heads are on the rockers are in I rebuilt those um, um, and I uh, have a uh, short video doing that uh, the headers are back on spark plugs are back in let's see yeah I think I showed the timing cover is also on I also put the radiator back in uh, though the, the AC condenser is not uh, not currently hooked up or well, actually fastened to the car I'm going to um, do a couple of things right now I'm probably gonna uh, torque down the uh, rockers they're just in there right now and I just snugged up and I'm gonna you know rotate the engine uh, until the number one cylinder is all the way down on the base circle on the cam and then I'm going to tighten each one of these up or any of that are in the same position as that number one and then I'm uh, gonna move on from there so I start today with a little bit of bad news I was um, putting all this uh, stuff back on the um, the engine uh, I put the, the water pump on, I put the radiator in, uh, the cooling fans, upper and lower hose, and uh, I started filling uh, the, the coolant. Um, I, I started uh, filling it through the, uh, the upper uh, rat hose here, and um, I normally fill the block up uh, prior to filling up the rad because it was, you know, it gets most of the uh, air out of the system by filling the block up first. And then it, you know, and then it starts to overflow the water pump when it gets up to this level in the um, into the engine, and then it goes into you know, the, the bottom of the thing. And that's when I started hearing trickling coming from the bottom of the engine. Um, so I said, "Oh, it must be the, you know the clamp that that's loose." So I you know I, I, I go in there and I crank on the clamp a little bit more, even though it didn't need to be tightened any more than it was. And uh, what seemed to be um, you know, something that really was not that uh, loose, uh, it actually, um, it got a little bit more, it started more coming out out of that bottom hose, and I'm thinking that it's either the bottom of the red has got a crack in it, or the neck where it gets uh, welded to the uh, aluminum body of the radiator. So I'm disappointed and all of this has got to come back out, including the water pump, because in order to clear, um, in order to get the rat out, I got to, I got to uh, take the water pump off again. So more setbacks, you know, it's part of working on cars, you know, and I'll get back to you so what I find. But I, I don't have aluminum uh, welding capability here, um, so I'm going to have to bring it somewhere and have it TIG welded, pressure tested and TIG welded. All right, get back to you. Okay, it's been a while since I made a video. Um, actually, a couple seconds for you. Um, last I left you, um, I had a leak from the bottom radiator hose and um, I took the rat out, um, I took the water pump off and uh, and what I found was that the there was so much white corrosion around the neck because what I did actually is before I cleaned it even as I pressure tested the whole thing it held 26 pounds of, of pressure and for at least 20 minutes and then not a drop came out of it so uh, I, I assumed that it was either the hose or the you know the, the clamp or the or corrosion around the neck and then and then that's what i found inside both the, the hose and the uh, the neck was uh corroded so um yeah i cleaned it all up cleaned all of the stuff down pressure tested it again and uh it was good um, I filled the system up yesterday. I put all the stuff back in, uh, including all the front accessories, uh, upper and lower hose, um, water pump, uh, AC compressor, drive belt, uh, alternator, all of that stuff was put back in. 
Um, I filled the uh, rad up here and uh, as you can see the, the levels down uh, about an inch from the neck but yeah it's held overnight like that for for a while now so uh, I'm good to go as far as uh, progressing um, so I'm probably gonna put the uh, intake manifold on today as well as all the the crap that's got to go on uh, connected to it uh, all the injectors the fuel lines electrical connections all of that stuff so yep we're getting there we're getting there so yeah this is a new uh, uh low car valley plate that i have already installed you've seen that previously and uh, yep let's get going i have been back at it uh as you can see i put on the intake manifold the valve covers have uh, been put on. Those nice chrome low car valve covers. Beautiful. And um, I put the spark plugs in and I put the spark plug wires on, including some new um, boots, heat shield boots. Okay. And then we do, and then I also did this side here too. So we're all wrapped up here. Uh, I'm ready to crank this thing at this point and um, I want to check oil pressure make sure that I got at least 20 pounds or greater oil pressure and then I'll put the uh, right now I got the uh, fuel pump um, relay out of it so it won't uh, crank any fuel to the engine it's uh, so it won't start uh, but I want to uh, yeah check uh, oil pressure and then once I get that um, we'll get going okay getting ready to cold crank this bad girl uh, i'm looking to get uh, some oil pressure over here lower right hand corner it will be illuminated while i'm cranking um yeah um I'm, it won't start uh, i have the fuel pump disconnected so um yeah keep your eye over here we want to see some fuel pressure while i'm cranking No oil pressure. Did I say fuel pressure before? Yeah. No oil pressure. Hmm. Well, uh, you're looking at complete darkness here. I'm probably going to start this thing and hope for the best because I don't see any oil pressure on the gauge while I'm cranking. So I'm going to start it. We've got oil pressure. It's running very well. seems to be fine so far there is some smoke coming off of it right now which is just residual uh, oil that dripped down or, or coolant that dripped down the side of the, the block but it's doing good okay 
Okay, I guess there's only one thing left to do. Uh, this is uh, the day after the the uh, warm up yesterday. Um, everything went good with the warm up, and I guess we just go for a road test. See how the old, uh, how old, and how good she does. <laughs> out of the garage I'm heading down my street Doesn't exactly run too well. Uh, it needs it needs a tune. That's for sure. It kind of falls on itself when it decels. Yep. Still has the, the same acceleration as it did before. So with that respect, it's still running the same. Uh, I won't be able to tell until I get on a highway whether in the upper RPM range uh, is it got more power. My check engine light is on. <clears throat> um, it says something about the cam position sensor solenoid valve. Of course, I disconnected that connector at the front of the uh, timing cover. That VVT thing, whatever that is. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I got open connectors uh, for the DOD at the back of the valley plate. And I also have an open connector at the front of the timing cover but I have you know I have to get it tuned take all that stuff out and then I'll get it the full potential of this DOD delete with a cam cam upgrade I have my cutouts on the exhaust closed right now and um, yeah, I, in town I kind of keep them closed. Um, I don't want to be known in this city as the, the annoying loud exhaust system. We're on the outskirts of the city now. 
I'm gonna open the pipes up slow down for this uh, ridiculous Jeep a good kick in the pants definitely more power than before and it hasn't even been tuned up yet I guess we'll get off at this exit here I guess with that we come to the end of my video I want to thank you all for joining me and for watching and I will guess I will catch you in the next one later